I run an AMD 3600X. This is an x86 64 CPU. And while you may not be using the exact same chip, you're probably using the exact same architecture. Unless maybe you're watching this on a phone, in which case you're using an ARM system. And I know Apple likes to make a big deal about their Apple Silicon, but for the most part, it's just an ARM chip. But regardless of the specific hardware, you're probably in one of these two categories. But they're not the only categories out there. One architecture that occasionally comes back into view is RISC. 5, an open standard instruction set under a royalty-free open license. Now, as of Debian 12, there is a wide range of officially supported architectures. AMD64, which is another name for x86-64, ARCH64, which is ARM64-bit, ARMEL, ARMHF, i386, MIPS, 64-bit MIPS, POWER, and IBM System Z. But no risk 5 on that list, whether it's 32-bit, 64-bit, or anything else. But with Debian 13 Trixie, that is meant to finally change. Now, Debian 13 is, to say the least, a little while away. Debian 12 basically just released a little bit over a month ago, but when it did release, this was posted onto the mailing list. Bits from the release team, a Trixie customer. On 10th of June 2023, we released Debian 12 Bookworm. And scrolling all the way down, there's a section here called Risk 564. Although it's not yet in the official architecture list, the Risk 564 port is making good progress. We expect to be in a position to ship Trixie with Risk 5 support, subject to architecture qualification later in the cycle. That was only a month ago. Now it's already changed. Risk 5 is now an official architecture. Dear all, some of you have been following on IRC, some of you may have noticed the accepted mails from DAC on the mailing list. Some of you may have noticed the recent closure of this bug right here. For all the others, I'm happy to share the good news. Risk 5 is now an official Debian architecture. If you don't believe it, just have a look at this link down here. I don't know why you wouldn't believe it, but this is where everything is being stored. You might notice also in SID, we'll get back to that in a moment. However, before you rush to update your sources.list file, I want to warn you that the archive is currently almost empty, and that only the SID and experimental suites are available. The procedure is to rebootstrap the port within the official archive, which means we won't import the full Debian port archive. Therefore, our next step is to build a minimal set of around 90 source packages using the Debian port archive and then import them into the official archive. These packages will be signed with a special GPG key using this email address right here, enabling easy tracking. This process has already started, hence the few accepted mails on the mailing list. It will probably take a few days, especially given that SID is constantly evolving, but once done, we'll point the build daemons to the official archive. In the meantime, you can just continue to use the Debian port archive on your devices. Strictly speaking, Debian on RISC-V isn't new. It's been around for a while, it's been in development for a while, and some users do make use of it. The thing that is changing now is now it is an official part of the project, and as such, going to receive the support of being officially within Debian. Also, RISC-V support more generally on Linux is definitely not new either. There are other projects out there like Red Hat and Fedora, which have been working on support since all the way back in 2016. And nowadays, with Fedora 38, there is an OCI image available. Also, I know people don't like IBM, and really, for good reason, but back in 2019, they joined the RISC-V Foundation. But also, Debian is not the first Debian-based system to have official RISC-V support. For quite a while now, Canonical with Ubuntu have had it as well. Download Ubuntu for RISC-V platforms, run Ubuntu with your favourite RISC-V boards, pick the OS image to match your hardware, flash it onto SD slash microSD card, load it onto your board, and away you go. Now, I'm not big on the RISC-V space, so I don't actually recognise any of this hardware except the QEMU emulator, which has its own set image. But for all of these different platforms, there is a specific image you need to be using. And with the 23.04 release, there was some additional hardware added onto this list. That being the Star 5 Vision 5.2, this one down the bottom here. Now, powerful may be a weird choice of words here, but it's being used in the context of RISC-V, in the context of these small, single board computers where most of them are relatively low power. This is powerful in the context of that. 
is not powerful if you put it up against a 7900X by AMD or a 12th gen Intel CPU. Like, that's not what was being said there. While these are some of the biggest projects working on Risk v support, they are not the only ones. For example, Gen 2. Over on the wiki, they do have a project page with surprisingly quite a few people working on the project. Now, it's not 100 people. It's not 50 people. It's not even 20 people, but they do have a group of people that are trying to make it happen. And the same is true over on the Arch Linux side. Now, I say the same, but it is a little bit different. So this person here has been working on the Arch Linux ARM side, and for what they have right now, it actually recommends that you go and work from the Gen 2 work. So they're sort of taking what Gen 2 has already done and then adapting it to fit for Arch Linux. Obviously, this is very early stages and later down the line, this isn't what you'd be doing. But right now with the very early environment we're working with, this is pretty much what you have to do. There's even some emerge command you have to run here. This is Arch Linux and you're running emerge. But to my surprise, there is a completely separate effort on Manjaro. Hello, we are bringing Manjaro to Risk v Hello, we're an intern team from Institute of Software Chinese Academy of Sciences. We are working on bringing Manjaro onto Risk v We would like to get in touch with the community and get help. This is the first time I used the Manjaro forum. I don't know whether it is appropriate to post under this category. So in their case, they were using the Star 5 Vision 5 version 1. And this thread didn't receive a ton of feedback, but did get a little bit of attention. And the GitHub itself, this is being run by a single person. So while it was making progress, it's not exactly a giant effort. Going back to the Arch side, there's a whole separate effort unrelated to the first one. This nowadays seems to be the main driving force, but even so, it's not like it's receiving tons and tons of maintenance, but it is slowly chugging along. I am of no misapprehension that sometime in the near future, we'll be seeing desktop class RISC-V hardware, but as support for RISC-V gets better and better and better, and it slowly makes its way out of specific industry uses and out of that hobbyist space, eventually as it gets easier and easier to use the platform, there's gonna be more and more reason to build that more powerful hardware that more and more users may wanna use. This is a very, very long process, but maybe one day there won't just be two consumer architectures, instead there'll be three. That day isn't today though, and you're probably not going to be daily driving Risk v anytime soon. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Are you a Risk v hobbyist? Are you working with Risk v in industry? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes, the Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And... This is a risky video.